Good morning, lovely people. I hope you're well on this um, sunny day, sunny spring day. This is your Yoga Solutions Live on this Tuesday, the 7th of April, 2020. I hope you're having a fantastic time wherever you are. Um, yeah, so good morning. So, yeah, I've been the, the busiest I've ever been. <laughs> it's uh, insane. I, I was, um, uh, yeah, I was just leaving my, my space the other day and I went outside and it was, all the neighbours hanging out with a glass of wine, two metres apart, of course, um, having a bit of a street party. <laughs> and um, yeah, I realised I had, since this whole thing, the, the virus thing blew up, I hadn't stopped. <laughs> um, a strange time to be busy. But it occurred to me today that there are an awful lot of people with an awful lot of time on their hands. And um, <clears throat> I, I think, you know, if you're not going to get in touch with your body now, when are you going to do it? This is such a perfect opportunity to um, <clears throat> start tuning into who you are at an essential level, you know? And I'm not just talking about. Um, physical exercise and getting fit and flexible and all those things. I'm, I'm talking about getting, well, we, we've got an opportunity to, to spend time in the present moment, you know? Uh, one thing I've noticed over, over this time is that the quiet and um, there, there's, there's like, um, there's generally more presence in the air, you know? Because we're we're not we're so used to being ahead of ourselves, you know. I've got to get to work. I've got to come back from work. I've got to get to the shops. And, you know, there's always this this timetabling um, to fit every, to fit life in, you know, to fit everything in. And now we've got this opportunity to well, most of us <laughs> we've got this opportunity to spend time in communion with our bodies and the way I see things. Um, Doing so, spending time in communion with your body, is the equivalent of spending time in communion with your essential self, your, um, uh, dare I say, your soul. Because my, my feeling, my experience, and, and um, what has sort of revealed itself to me over my 30 years or so of practice as an adult, is that um, the body is the body was always talking to me throughout my life. It was always talking to me. It was always telling me exactly um, what was going on in terms of how I was behaving in the world, and what it was telling me was that I <laughs> wasn't happy, um, and it was because of the way I was relating. Uh, I didn't know any of that at the time. I just had aches and pains, and like everyone does. But though, those those things um, expanded and took over my life until I had to do something about it. And that was my body. Thank you, body. <laughs> that was my body telling me to change my life. And um, and I think we all get these signals. And right now we've got a bit of time to um, explore. So um, if you want to join me, uh, um, I'm going to guide you through a little something, I'm not sure what. I was thinking Pranayama because I'm, I'm putting together a Pranayama online course at the moment. But um, I think uh, I want to do something physical because when we do Pranayama people tend to think of it as just the breathing bit and um, I understand it to be um, a relationship to your environment, uh, the you know, enviromatic thing. So uh, we can explore that. Let's um, let's lie down. So there's. Um, I hope the sound's okay. I, I, my microphone blew up the other day, so I've got this room mic, which might be a bit more echoey, but hopefully you can hear me clearly enough. Um, 
so so when we lie down there's this um, relaxation that is about us letting go of holding our weight up which is a good thing and because of that relaxation the breath will move more naturally within ourselves so if, if you just lie down with me and organize your feet underneath your knees so you can use them if you like but uh, just for now turn your heels out so you can rest the knees together um, that, that helps you let go of tension in the groins and, and also if the pelvis isn't tucked under because uh, if you tuck your pelvis under to rest the knees together you'll have to pull with the groins whereas if you um, rest the pelvis in the neutral state that's in the middle of the sacrum then the legs can relax together and there'll be space in your groins um, what else other organisationally shoulders um, if you've if you're in the habit of stretching yourself out then it might be a good idea to roll your shoulders up and back just to um, stop the pull on the neck and uh, you know the attempt to stretch your neck is, is you'll, ne you'll never succeed or if you do it'll be pulling shortness into your lower back so getting the upper spine to come through is the thing that frees up the neck and throat so you can do that with your shoulders on the ground they kind of pulling them back and whilst they're quite high up and then um, the release of breath in your chest helps um, the spine and the breastbone come together towards the central axis of your body it's a nice feeling head um, some people will be short uh, tight in the base of the skull other people will be tight from the throat what we need is a head that's in the middle and uh, the back of the head would be the center of the back of the head would be on the ground and the eyes are uh, relaxed eyes looking a bit like they're looking at the horizon uh, when relaxed eyes are vertically up that's when your head is in the middle and then uh, because of our arrangement you should be able to relax quite well through the bones as in the bony contact of the head the bony contact of the shoulders um, elbows pelvis and feet and you should be able to let go and in letting go there's an inner quietening there's a there's a release of the breath that travels inwards rather than that sense of pushing outwards that um, many of us get involved with when we're working the arrival of the breath if if that is sourced and we touch the ground there's a sense of it widening from behind you and this is where the interactive stuff starts to happen you can relax and drop into your ground to widen and it's a pleasant feeling um, and then the release of the breath will be more emptying in the front but now what I'd like you to do is to experiment with um, pressing down through your feet slightly rotating out through the toes like you're kind of wiping them out or massaging someone with your feet or something uh, to bring the thighs into uh, to bring the legs into parallel ish and that just that little action uh, will be taking some of the weight off the pelvis hopefully and ideally it's it's equal through the whole footprint so it's not just the heels it's the front of the foot as well and if you are engaging with your touch to your feet the base of the spine will be lighter and um, I suggest that you now bring your hands, clasp them, put them on your forehead and sort of rest the elbows up in space whilst you drop back through the shoulders and the head so um, we're now getting involved with our contact and um, there's a subtle difference in that I want you to press back slightly through the feet 
so that the pelvis is now heavier than the feet. And you do that with the uh, with breathing. It, it needs to agree with breathing. So the the arrival of the breath is something that happens because you touch the ground. And same with the upper body. Um, you've got your shoulders and you've got your head on the ground. The arrival of the breath is sourced in the embrace of the earth. And that um, expressive engagement with contact will most definitely widen the breath in the back of you yeah, more firmly than when you were just sort of feeling it. And that wideness, uh, that, that extra wideness behind you gives you more space on the inside when you let go of the breath. Especially if the release of the breath, particularly from the ribs, is relating to where you touch the ground. Well, it could be anywhere, but so let's say the feet. If when you release the breath, so try this, put your hands on your ribs. When you release the breath inwards, it's just a deflation on the inside. I don't want you to push the breath out. But when you let it go, if it relates to standing on your feet, do the ribs get involved in that so that the, the ribs themselves are kind of pressing through the feet? Or through the pelvis, if you like. Uh, probably be easier to find because you can uh, directly kind of use the ribs to pull the pelvis towards you from one side with the release of the breath. And that will give you a sense of more groundedness in that side of the pelvis. Try that side to side. Um, so if, if you've done that, then there's more of a connection between the pelvis and the ribs. And then you can, once again, uh, use the feet to breathe. And when you release the breath, stand on those feet and see if the ribs feel more connected through the pelvis. So it's an experiment in contact. Nothing more, really. Um, rather than what fussing about what posture you're doing, because it can turn into bridge if you like. But um, it, it's more about, for me, um, yoga is about exploring our relationships to ourselves, of course, but through how we relate to the world around us. And, uh, and, and I don't mean relate in our heads, I mean relate physically because it is our physical actions that causes responses in the world around us. And if we get a chance to explore directly, very simply, how we make contact with the earth, how we engage with, with space with our hands or, or with contact, how we touch. And at the same time, if we monitor how through breathing and the release of the breath, because the, the breath is an expression of how we actually feel and who we are, mind and breath follow each other, you know. So if we engage with our earth and we, if we engage uh, responsibly, you know, with our space, we, if we express and engage with space, through breathing and the release of the breath, whilst monitoring how the, the very centre of us feels, you know, are, we, are we moving from our centre or is the centre a heavy lump that we have to carry? Do we feel supported by our contact? Do we feel light in space? Do those things equate? And uh, when we're working with earth and space, you can, as I took you through, you can start to work with relationships to the bo that the body has with itself from those things. So 
instead of the usual knee strain that people experience when they push up into a bridge, which gives you that strain as well, you can use the touch of the foot to send your pelvis up towards the ribs, away from the knee, so you start to feel supported from your touch. And if you've noticed that with, particularly with the release of the breath, that the ribs and pelvis can come together in this way, then the ribs will start to feel like they are standing on the feet, which will leave you freer in the thoracic spine. The thoracic means rib cage. So the thoracic spine will be sort of relating to the feet. And when you have a good relationship from your wings and your hands from space, it generally brings the centre of the thoracic spine uh, closer to the centre of the body. So it, it brings the heart forwards essentially. And if that's the case, when you're using your touch and you're using your space to open your heart, and perhaps when you release your weight through your base, perhaps you can move from that um, opening, perhaps. I had no intention to do back then, then but um, it just felt like something that could arise, see? Um, what else can we do? Let's uh, roll over into the side. Let's explore something not dissimilar the other way around. It's not dissimilar because we still have the earth underneath us and we and our relationship to it through our own quality of contact, quality of engagement, and that includes the knees. Most people will be heavy on the knees or pulled down towards the knees. If you touch with the knees, then you get support away from the ground. Um, and it, so if you're touching, then you'll be meeting space. So if you're touching with the knees, you'll get support away from the ground in the sort of solar plexus rib area. And if that's the case, then the arrival of the breath from that support will arrive behind you. So it feel like you're meeting space. And then, once again, the release of the breath related to your touch, will support you. So, and then you've got big toes, what do they do? Tips of the big toes. If you're, th if you're not just pushing back against them to do the posture, if you're touching with the tips of the big toes, you'll find something change around here, around the hips, because the, the feet and hips kind of relate to each other in, in two directions. So when you touch the ground with the big toes, as if, taking your weight through the tips of the big toes, as if, probably won't be able to, but as if, then you'll start to get a, a response away from the ground in the lower belly, which means the sacrum itself is supported by just the tickle of the big toes on the ground, the sacrum itself. Uh, what else? The hands, oh, which means you can be free to breathe around the base of the spine without the back setting because you've got support, hands, hands going down, support the weight of the head, the brain within the head, so you don't have to be heavy in the head or lifted in the head, the hands going down support you in space so you can breathe into the space behind your head. So if you have a relationship to touch, that gives you a relationship to space as you breathe and as you release the breath, then you'll find relationships between yourself happen. And one of the things that uh, we noticed, or one of the things I noticed when I was on my back, was when I use my, when I, when I arrive on my feet, there's a feeling of the pelvis coming up into the ribs and the ribs arriving on the foot. So let's see if that's true here. So when I arrive on my feet, instead of the knees carrying the weight, there can be a sense of using that foot to help the pelvis and the ribs come together 
on both sides. And I've just noticed, I knew it, but I've just noticed on a physical level that the use of the hands help the ribs move away from the hands. Help the pelvis have somewhere to land when they move away when the pelvis moves away from the feet. So my pelvis is resting on my hands, my hands are sending my ribs up to my feet, and I can let go with the release of the breath into my touch and from my touch through space, through my fingers, my toes. Ah. and so on and so forth. Um, I was ready to do one-legged dog, followed by possibly the, um, what's that one called? I can't, I, I can't remember. Where you, where you start to um, turn it inside out, not upside down. I can't remember what that one's called. Um, but uh, yeah, I felt like I was gonna go into all sorts of variations and explorations, possibly take it once again into back bend. I don't know. But, um, so, uh, I mean, what did, what did I just give you? I, I gave you a class in how to explore your relationships to yourself through exploring your relationships to your earth and your space. And this is my this is my foundation work, I suppose. It's, it's my um, enviro-somatic approach, as in the way you feel in your body. And if you, if you follow me, you'll be feeling as nice as I did, hopefully. Um, the way you feel in your body, your somatic experience, is a direct result of how you engage with your environment. It's, it's seeming more and more obvious. Either the, it's either, either the, um, I'm making more sense these days, or um, perhaps in the matrix of things, people are, are generally thinking a bit more in these terms, that, they're, that we are not these sort of isolated, mechanistic um, meat wagons that our intellect carries around and organizes. We are whole human beings, which, involves, um, f through the physicality of our bodies, involves a relationship to the world around us. And um, my felt sense and understanding of the thing is that when the body isn't happy, it's because it's not happy with our interactions with the world around us. And um, if you can immerse in the body itself through tuning into your interactions directly and the quality of them, and measure the outcome through your somatic experience, when it becomes pleasant, you're probably on the right lines. So it sort of um, should empower you to really tune into your own body and, and, and enjoy, you know? Look for pleasure. Um, not the kind of pleasure of control, not the pleasure of um, winning, but the pleasure of absolute, unambitious presence without restriction. So it's, it, unambitious doesn't mean you don't do stuff. You, you do stuff because it occurs to you. You dare to do stuff because it, it just comes, you know? So there's no holding back and there's no pushing forwards. It's just being absolutely present to what the body is saying to you. And, you know, you've got a bit of time. And uh, that's people's, that's mostly people's complaint about this kind of work is that um, it takes time. Well, if you've got some, I can't think of anything better to do, really. So, um, yeah. I've got five minutes. Um, I, I normally launch into my spiel about what I've got coming up, and I will do that at the end, but um, what I quite like to do is a little seated meditation. So uh, if you want to join me, you can, you can do so. Don't have to make this shape, I find this particularly comfortable myself. 
But um, if you don't, then, then you don't have to have your legs like this. Just um, something that allows you to feel freely upright. And first thing I'd like you to do is once again get in, com get in, become intimate with your touch. So you can put your hands on your thighs, uh, you can put, it on, put them on your lap if you're sitting on a chair. Um, just something, uh, and where where you're looking for support from your touch. So rather than sitting up and resting the weight of your shoulders off your off your back, um, lean into your hand slightly to support yourself. I, I did a little one-to-one -one with um, someone recently, and it involved actually taking weight through their hands uh, to help um, understand how the body can be light in the middle. So if you just give a little bit of responsibility to your hands and to your feet, so the weight has to come forwards a bit. If you're, even if you're on a chair, the weight comes forwards a bit. So you can receive the breath from your contact. And uh, by, I'm lowering the head, not to be heavy in the head, but to stop any holding up at the base of the skull, so the eyes can be relaxed and kind of up inside my head. And if you receive the breath by surrendering to your own touch then it'll be received in the back of you a little more pelvic floor can be relaxed, spine can relax and if when you release the breath instead of being heavy towards the ground you once again intend to be supported by your contact so feet um, if you use the feet the thighs will work to touch the ground if you lean into the hands, the, the shoulders will do something. And then slowly, as you breathe, in this rebound kind of way, and as you release the breath in this rebound kind of way, you can very slowly stack back up so that the weight is, so that the spine is a little more through the body because of your breathing organisation, each inhale from the ground, from your support, each exhale to the same points of support, that will bring you closer to your centre and allow the centre of the body to start to release up, away from the base, and if the hands, the hands can be anywhere, um, as long as they, they can take a, just a little bit of responsibility, perhaps now just, just for the shoulders, for the weight of the shoulders, so that the shoulders don't start hanging off your spine. And then um, with that lightness that you get, the, it's the inside of it, it's the fluid core in the base that gets to release up with the release of the breath. But if you trust that, then the ribs around that space get to rest down away from your wings. And when you get those, that two-way action, you can start to allow the heart itself to present forwards so that the head can be lighter and more upright. Breath by breath. So to your touch from your touch when you breathe in, all the way to the crown from your touch when you release the breath, all the way to the crown, but with a sense of resting down, away from your head. And if, you, if you've um, used the contact to support space in the body, you'll probably find yourself more forwards over your base, and that hopefully is centered around the heart. And the shoulders can be relaxed because the spine is in the middle of that. And then the breath becomes this omnidirectional expansion into the space all around you. Underneath you, either side of you, behind you, above you. And then the release of breath is a release through yourself.
from above to below and from below to above. And the centre of that release, the centre of the opening within that is the heart. So it becomes a kind of pulse from the heart itself in all directions. And when you can recognise that on a physical level, that becomes both your support, or the reason you're touching the ground, this pulse, and the reason you are upright and in space. Good. Well, I enjoyed that. <laughs> Hope you did. It's a little un unusual for me to a bit different, a bit more like a class, you know, rather than answering someone's question. Yeah, it's a bit like a class you might experience with me. Um, talking of which, um, it looks like it's going to be Wednesday, late-ish mornings, my, my additional class. Uh, an hour and 15, I think. So um, it'll be 12 quid for a live participation when I, when I get it going. Uh, and six if you want to watch, the, uh, watch it Sort of uh, in the background without me, without inter interacting with me. Um, I've reduced the number of places I can have on screen because I want to be able to um, not not just catch people um, when when I see something. I want to be able to really be with each of my participants. So um, if you want a live place, you need to uh, when I get the booking up, you need to book soon. There's still the Tuesdays uh, morning and early evening. Um, morning tends to get fully booked. There's one or two places for this evening, I think, if if you want to um, take part. And again, if 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 I've run out of places, it's because I've got nine people booked. You can do the watch only thing for half price, so it's a ten and a five for Tuesdays. Uh, I think Wednesdays will start next week. I haven't really had time to put it together for this week. Um, what I have got this week, what else? It, oh yeah, uh, this Saturday. Um, Saturday, two hour retreat morning workshops are gonna be ongoing, um, pretty much. I've got uh, one coming up this Saturday, um, and you'll need to book a place. Again, I'm limiting it to nine on screen. Uh, it's 20 pounds, just only 20 pounds, it's actually, um, for a live place, and 10 pounds for a view only place. Um, following week, Saturday the 25th, I think it is, is that right? No, no, it's a couple of weeks away. So I'm, I'm doing them every, yeah, so uh, 11th and 18th will be the Saturday two hour retreat. On the Saturday the 25th of April, I'm doing a, a British Wheel CPD day online. And it was, it was set up a while ago before all of this. And they suggested that I put it on anyway. and. Um, I've got, uh, it's, yeah, it's got the format, a, a British Bill format in that um, the subject is very clearly defined. It, it's about, um, it's relating to Patanjali Sutras and particularly the, the, the thing around movements of the mind and uh, how there are, there's only one useful movement of the mind and how other ones get in the way. And the, the main one I'm, I'll be focusing on that gets in the way is fixed mental impressions. It's, it's, it's all there in the, in the yoga text, you see. And uh, so the, the theme of the day is um, if we can eradicate fixed mental impressions, then uh, practice transforms. And the title of the workshop is um, Change Perspective, Transform Practice. And it's a full day workshop from 10 till 4 on um, April 25th and uh, British Wheel and Yoga Scotland and uh, IYN members now uh, you can all use the the you can all use a, a coupon code it's just uh, Joe J O dash B W Y to get a fiver off okay British Wheel Yoga um, and so uh, so yes uh, with 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 the discount it's uh, 30 pounds for the full day from 10 till 4 and obviously there'll be breaks 
um, and uh, break for lunch as well. And um, yes, for you only, with this discount would be twenty pounds, or thirty-five and, and twenty-five if you're not a member of any of the above. Okay, um, yeah, that's on the twenty-fifth. Otherwise, if you, if you want a a, a nice two-hour Saturday morning retreat. Um, Places go fast, people book a week in, a, in advance now, so I would book your place for next Saturday or the one after uh, ASAP if you want to take part in that. Uh, oh yeah, one more thing. Uh, I think I have one place left on the Core Intelligence CPD course that I'm doing. Um, that's not this week, that's, not, that's um, the course itself begins uh, April the 16th, that's a Thursday evening, that's 6.30 p.m. Uh, every Thursday for six weeks. It's an intensive course for um, dedicated teachers and uh, people on the path to self-development and other things. Um, yeah, there's one live place left, I believe, um, and that again, you can you can book that one view only, and uh, if and that works, especially if you if you're not free on a Thursday evening. It's cheaper and you still get all the recordings and you still get all the one-to-ones that go with it and you know the support you need. Gosh, I've got so much on. <laughs> um, so yes, I hope you enjoyed today's session. Feel free to spread it around whilst it's up on Facebook. I, I'll take it off at some point and offer it. Uh, put it it'll always be on the website so silver members and gold members you have access and by the end of today, uh, it'll be there. And um, yes, ah, that's enough. Lots of love to you all. I am Mark J. Aquaviva of the Aquaviva School of Yoga, signing off until the same time, same place next week. Much love. Bye now.